Hello everyone, Zaid from Z Security here with another video in our Hack the Box series. In this video, Dimitris is going to hack the Kronos machine. This is a Linux machine and the difficulty of this machine is actually slightly higher than the previous ones that we covered. So I highly recommend watching the other videos in this series before this one if things don't really make sense here because he's going to be skipping over some parts that he covered in more details in previous videos. It only makes sense that way because it gets boring if he keeps repeating himself. So as usual, thank you very much Dimitris. This video is packed with useful information and it's actually different than all of the information that we covered in the previous videos. He's actually doing the stuff that we covered previously very, very quickly. So again, information gathering and map, quick and map scan to discover ports and services, and then everything new from here on. So you'll learn how to bypass basic login screens with SQL injections. You'll learn more about using the burp suite proxy and repeater, and you'll learn how to exploit a remote code execution vulnerability to gain remote access to a target server. Now, before we get into the video, I would really appreciate it if you smash the like button. This tells YouTube that you're enjoying our videos. It helps us grow. It will get the video suggested to more people that are interested in it, and it'll make us make more videos like this. Also, if you're enjoying this Hack the Box series, make sure you hit the bell icon to get notified every time we upload a video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. This also was part of a live session that we did in the VIP community. So Dimitris was actually hacking this machine live where people in the VIP community were able to talk to him and ask him questions. So if you like that kind of stuff, check out our VIP membership. You get a lot of other stuff other than this. And I'll leave you with Dimitris. Let's go. Hello and welcome to yet another live hacking session on the VIP Z Security Discord server. My name is Dimitris and today we're going to hack the Kronos machine on Hack the Box. This box is medium rated and I will show you how to root it. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is the machine's IP, it is 10, 10, 10, 13. I'm going to start off with a simple nmap scan that will show me all the open ports in the machine. You, no, you guys know the command is nmap uh, sv, sorry, which probes the open ports, dash a, which enables uh, OS detection, and I'm going to specify the uh, IP of the machine. We'll just give this some time to run. And like I said, this will show us all the open ports that are running on the current machine. So now that we have the results, we can see that this machine has three open ports. Port 22 for open SSH, port 53 for, for DNS, and port 80 for the HTTP server. We can go ahead and access the HTTP server right here. And we can see the Apache 2 uh, default uh, page that you get when you install it. Before we do anything else, it is nice to note that this machine is running DNS. So in this case, on Hack the Box, we would edit the etc host file and add the domain of the machine. Since these domains go after the box name, we can guess that this will be chron uh, chronos.hackthebox. So I'm going to nano etc hosts and I'm going to add the IP and the domain name. I'm going to save this. And now we can go ahead and access the chronos.hackthebox page. So, so far so good. What we did now was add the domain name from the DNS server that we have right here running. So now that we have access to Bates, we can do some DNS enumeration and find the uh, subdomains, May maybe this machine has hidden subdomains uh, because like I said before, it's running DNS. And the command to do so is dig axfr, which axfr specifies zone transfer. And we're going to specify the IP of the machine and the current, uh, the current domain name that we have. After doing so, we get a very interesting um, the main name which is admin chronos.hackthebox so let's copy this one and let's try to add it 
first into the host file. Perfect. So if I go ahead and access admin.chronos to hack the box, we get a login page. Uh, we can try default credentials like admin admin, but this won't get us anywhere. Uh, so we can open the SQL injection cheat sheet that you can find on NetSpark eh? and try some SQL injections to try and bypass this login page. This one did not work. But this one worked. So now we have successfully bypassed the login page with a SQL injection. So now that we have bypassed it, we can see a net tool uh, which executes a ping command or a trace route command of the IP uh, we specify. Let's check if I, let's check if ping works. Let's check if this net dot this net tool is working. And yes, this net tool does indeed work. So let's check if we can get RCE, which is short for remote code execution. So I will add a semicolon and add the ls command. And we can see that we have remote code execution and this is perfect. This means that we can run uh, some commands to the target uh, machine through this net tool because it has a misconfigured PHP file. So now or we can try to gain a reverse shell uh, and exploiting this certain vulnerability we can use burp suite to intercept the the request and change it into giving us a reverse shell so i'm going to set the proxy server here and i'm going to execute the uh, trace route 8.8.8.8 .8 and if we go over to burp suite we can see that we have captured the, uh, uh, the the packet so now if we send this to repeater we can modify this command so we can delete the host and the trace route command and replace it to a command that we want in this case we want to gain a reverse cell so I have opened up a reversal cheat sheet, cheat sheet from Pentest Monkey, and we want to get this netcat uh, reversal command. Going over to the repeater again, we can paste the command right here and change the IP over here with my IP, which is this one. And I'm gonna leave the port the same. So now I'm gonna clear my screen and start the netcat listener. This is the command start the listener. And now that we have the command ready, we have to encode the, the string. So now going to convert selection URL and encode key characters and sending the request, we will get the remote code, the reverse cell that we wanted. We can check and we are WW data. Now we have gained uh, control over this uh, target machine. But what we want to do is escalate our privileges to uh, a higher uh, user, which is called root. So uh, to do so, uh, we have to exploit some certain vulnerabilities inside this machine. So I'm going to attempt that. Before we do so, we can try to go for in, in the newlist uh, user and getting the user flag. And this is great. We've got the user flag. And now we have to become root to get the root flag. I will go uh, to the temp directory and I will now upload uh, a Linux enumeration program called LinPies that will display valuable information for this target machine. So I can go back to my browser and this is the GitHub repository for LinPies. I'm gonna copy the repository 
and now I'm gonna do git clone to get it great now we have it we can change our directory in here cd to link piece and we can see the link piece.sh file now we can start a python uh, http simple http server to get to gain the to get the file to the target machine great we have started the simple http server on port 8000 so now we can go back to the machine and do wget http 10 10 14 15 i think this is my ip i'm not sure yes this is my ip on port 8000 and the file name is leanpeas.sh we have got the file so now if i do ls we see leanpeas.sh and in order to run it we have to change the directories of the file with chmod plus x leanpeas.sh i'm going to run leanpeas now we'll see what it will output for us let's give it some time to run and we have the results that we want we want to check the chrome jobs on this machine and these are just default cron jobs that every machine has but there is this specific one that is being run by root and it's on var www laravel and it's uh, executing the artesian file which is a scheduler for laravel and this runs every 30 seconds so what we have to do is edit this artesian file and make it give us a root reverse cell connection so I can go ahead and uh, close this one and then start my listener again and try to send the netcat connection back to my machine let's see if this works let's resend it it appears that I can't get uh, a reverse connection back I'm struggling with that. I'm going to I'm going to close my browser because I think this is what causes it. So I'm going to close my browser and I'm going to reopen it. So now let's see if we can access the page again. Yes, we can access the page. Okay. So I'm going to set the proxy again. There we go. We can copy this and then send it back again. And we've gained our connection back. Okay. So I'm going on var ww Laravel. We have Laravel here. And if we list the files, we can see artisan right here. So if I cut the contents of artisan, we can see, like I said, it is uh, a scheduler for Laravel. So now what we want to do, like I said before, is edit this artisan file to give us a root reverse cell. So what I'm going to do is um, turn off this Python HTTP server and try to locate the uh, reversal PHP file that is stored in our Kali machines with the command locate reverse cell and we can see it is right here I'm gonna copy its location I'm gonna do CP which will copy this file and I'm gonna specify my current directory So we can see right here we have php reversal.php. I'm gonna change the name of this file with the command mv php reversal.php and I'm gonna call it cell.php. And we have successfully changed the name of the file. Now I'm gonna edit this file. So now here we can uh, edit the IP 
to my IP, which is 10, 10, 13, 15. And I'm going to change the IP, the, the port, excuse me, to 4444. I'm going to save the file. I'm going to clear my screen and then do Python M simple HTTP server. We have successfully started again our simple HTTP server on port 8000. So um, we want to clear all the contents of the artisan file and add our own PHP script to download and execute the PHP reverse cell. So now to actually uh, remove all the contents, we can do cut dev null and specify the artisan file. And if we do cut artisan again, we can see that it displays um, no info. So now what we want to do is add our own PHP script. So the command for this is echo. And now we're going to start our PHP script. PHP system and this will uh, execute a command and we want to execute the command curl http i'm going to add my ip right here on port 8000 and i'm going to specify the uh, name of the file which is cell.php i think my syntax is right and i'm going to specify artisan let me check if my syntax is correct over here. Yes, my syntax is correct. So I'm going to hit enter here. If I do ls and do cut artisan again, we don't see the, the contents. So I'm going to attempt to spawn um, an interactive terminal to check uh, if this is the issue with the command Python C import. Pty pty dot spawn bin bash. Let's see if this was the the case. Cut artisan. No, actually, this was not the case. Uh, let me just run this again. Okay, now this should work. Yes, so we have written the contents uh, to the artisan file. And all that's left for us to do is open a, a startup a netcat listener on port 4444. We can wait for this because like we said before, this is a cron job which is being executed every 30 seconds. Let's give it some time and check if we gain a reverse cell. We see the, the try to get the cell.php once but we did not have the uh, listener uh, up. So let's see if we, get, if we gain it now. There we go. The 30 seconds passed and we, see, we can see that we are root. There we go. And we have successfully rooted the machine. So now all that's left for us to do is cut the uh, root flag. And as we can see, we have gained full control over this target machine and we have successfully rooted it.